Hello, this is the laboratory test class and today we are going to talk about the sieve analysis and as you can see this is in our lab laboratory test class this is the experiment number and it is going to be on uh, number four for week number six and this is the sieve analysis of aggregate um, as usual we are going to make the number of our specimens to be two and the required materials here is going to be mainly aggregate whether fine aggregate or coarse aggregate and the required equipments are going to be mechanical sieve shaker scale and sieves so now let's go to the main um, the main requirements and how we are going to conduct this experiment so as you can see here this is the contents of the experiment we call it the sieve analysis of aggregate and it is it goes under ASTM C136 this is the standard which is the sieve analysis of fine and coarse aggregates the main purpose of this um, this experiment is as you can see to determine the particle size distribution this is the most important thing that we want to highlight which is the particle size as you can see we or as we can as we know that we have like fine and coarse aggregate we have fine and coarse aggregate so we need to find what are the sizes what is the different sizes what is the distribution of the sizes for the fine and for the coarse aggregate by dry sieving so the significance and you the significance of this um, of this experiment that this test is used to determine the grading of materials that are to be used as aggregates as we know it ensures the particle size distribution complies with applicable requirements and provides the data necessary to control the material of various aggregate products and mixtures containing aggregates what does it mean that we want this kind of particle size distribution for what to control the material of various aggregate products and the mixtures this is the main purpose for this and the data may also be useful in developing relationships concerning porosity and packing this is something that sometimes needed in practice whenever that we are dealing with porosity or packing what are you know the equipments that we want or the apparatus that we're going to use first balances balances or scales so this is already provided in our SKKU lab with a minimum accuracy of 0.5 G for a coarse aggregate and 0.1 G for the fine aggregate so if we're going to talk about the coarse aggregate we need to use 0.5 if we're going to talk about sand or fine aggregate we're going to have a scale with accuracy of 0.1 G after that saves and as you can can see or going to see even in the video that we have different we need to have different sieves and after that mechanical sieve shaker as you can see in the figure a17 and a18 this is the mechanical sieve sieve shaker as you can see if I make it smaller this oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry so here this is as you can see these are the sieves here we are stacking them between the two hands of the sieve shaker actually in our lab we have different sieve shaker than this one but in general they are the same maybe we have some something similar to this one which is as you can see it is a little bit um, uh, staggered in this way and we have like kind of shaker here some some equipment here so this is we call it hanging type hanging type sieve shaker and sieves for small samples of aggregate this is for the small samples this is for the small samples okay so this is the mechanical sieve shaker oven capable of maintaining a uniform temperature between 110 plus or minus 5 C this is we have the oven already provided sample splitter to reduce the quantity of the material to size required for sieves okay analysis this is already we have something similar in our lab which is going to split this is after that what is the test specimens that we're going to have thoroughly mix the aggregate sample and reduce it to add amount suitable for testing using a sample splitter or by quartering I mean that this is by my by your hands you can quarter it as we have seen it before and the minimum sample size should be as follows so this is the minimum okay if we are going to talk about fine aggregate look here the first two of the table are talking about fine aggregate the remaining is talking about the coarse aggregate so we are talking about starting from 0.1 g 0.1 sorry kg and ending with 15 kg it based on the size of the particles itself so if we have the with aggregate nominal for example coarse aggregate with a nominal maximum size of 9.5 millimeter 
This means that we're going to have one kg sample, and so on and so forth. Let's go to the test procedure here. First, we need to dry the aggregate test sample to a constant weight at temperature of 100 T plus or minus 5, then cool to room temperature. So we're going to have this uh, drying them up and then putting them at a temperature in the oven and then cool them to the room temperature. And then we're going to select suitable sieve size to furnish the information required by the specification. This is something that is very important by the specification covering the material to be tested. Common sieves in millimeters are, this is you're going to find in the tail. We are going to start from different, I'd like to show it, yes, here it's better. We are talking starting from 0 0.075 millimeter and going larger until we reach 50 millimeter. And in the sieve size, sometimes we are talking it with different uh, designation, which is the smallest one means 200. 200 means that 200 opening in one inch. And we are going to go larger until we reach to an opening size equal to 2 inch, which is very big. So we have two ways of talking about the scales here, whether with the numbering, number 200, 150, 30, 16, 8, 4, and then after that, this is starting from here by the opening size, 3 8 inch, half inch, 3 quarters inch, 1 inch, 1 and half inch, and 2 inch. But here, we are going to use the millimeter starting from 0.07 millimeter and ending with 50 millimeter. Okay, so let's go now to the next part, which is we are going to nest the sieves as you can see here. We're going to nest the sieves as you can see here by hand or by mechanical uh, apparatus for sufficient period. So we're going to let it mix, okay? We are going to let the sieve shaker to work for like two, three minutes, for example, or five minutes. The criterion for sieving time is that after completion, not more than 1% of the uh, residue in any individual sieve will pass the sieve during one minute. This is something in peripheral we can use it, okay, in general. And number five, determine the weight of each uh, size increment, which is, this is, we're going to have it in figure A20. Uh, this is, the th we are going to weight each amount that is retained on each sieve. Okay, so we're going to put the sample, as you can see here. And after that, after putting it here, we are going to have, retrieve every sieve and weight the amount using our scale. And then the total weight of the material after sieving should be compared with the original weight of the sample placed on the sieves. If the amount differ by more than 0.3% based on the original dry sample weight, the results should not be used for acceptance purposes. Okay. And then the last thing is the analysis and results. Calculate the percentage passing, total percenti percentage retained, and percentage of various sizes of, pa of fractions to the nearest 0.1% percent on the basis of the total weight of the initial dry sample and number two plot the grain size distribution in a semi log graph paper as you can see in figure a 21 this is here semi graph. as you can see this is the graph that we're going to have after after that here and then plot the grain size distribution in a 0.45 power graph uh, power graph paper Okay, no need to do this. No need to do this now. Just we're going to make number one and number two. No need to calculate or uh, to make the power graph paper or to calculate the fineness of uh, uh, fineness models. This is the end. And the last thing is the report. We are going to report the percentage of material retained between consecutive sieves, cumulative percentage of material retained on each sieve, or percentage material passing each sieve and report per percentage to nearest whole number, except if the percentage passing is 0.075 millimeter, which is number 200 sieve, is less than 10%, it should be reported to the nearest 0.1%. And then the grain size distribution plots using both semi-log, as we said, we're going to use this, and 0.45 power, no need for, for this. And the last thing is the fitness modulus to the nearest, we're not going to use this uh, as in our report. This concludes what we are going to do in the sieve analysis and what are the procedure, what the apparatus and how we can report our experiment. Thank you very much and goodbye.